General Griffin, Brigadier General Mercer, Brigadier General Epperly, Command Chief Warrant Officer Lyle, Brigadier General Heiskanen, Command Sergeant Major Johnson, Major General Retired Long, Brigadier General Retired Scott. On behalf of Major General Timothy P. Williams, the Adjutant General of Virginia, welcome to the promotion ceremony for Colonel Lopte, C. Florida. I am Major Brandon Lindsay, your MC for today's ceremony. And I would like to extend a special welcome to Colonel Flores' guests. We are glad to have you joining us today. Please stand for the arrival of the official party. And remain, remain standing for the singing of the national anthem and invocation. <laughs> and merciful God of the whole universe. As we gather to celebrate with Colonel Lapte Flora, we invoke your holy presence and blessings upon this important occasion. I thank you for those present here today and ask that you bless and protect them all. Bless everyone involved with this special promotion. We are grateful for the freedom we enjoy in the United States of America. We are mindful of the cost of that freedom and all those who paid that great price. God bless them and their families. We are thankful for the men and women who continue to stand ready to go to battle for the cause of peace. We pray for our military leaders whose awesome responsibility is to lead in a way that will bring victory. We have seen their leadership ability time and again and they have proved their worth. Today, we come to honor one of the Army's best and one of our very own, Colonel Lapte Flora, as he is promoted to the rank of Brigadier General. Today, our hearts are filled with happiness for him and his family. So gracious God, you have prepared Lapte for this day. You have blessed him with this special trust so we ask that you also protect him as he goes forth in the role of general to rule. 
Dear Lord God, we thank you that we can be present for this great event in the life of Lopte Forum. This is our prayer in your holy name. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Thank you, uh, to Major Blevins, Cindy Blevins, and Chaplain Bennett. Ladies and gentlemen, now I'm honored to introduce the host for today's ceremony, Major General Timothy P. Williams, the 28th Adjutant General of Virginia. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to see everybody here today. Let's try that again. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. <laughs> again, great to see everybody here. Ladies and gentlemen, special guests, and there are many here today. I'll invoke uh, my Australian friends, all protocols observed. So today, we focus, at least this morning, on Colonel Lapte Flora. After becoming a part of the Flora family in Roanoke, he completed his high school education in three years and went on to attend the Virginia Military Institute where he earned a Bachelor of Science degree in 1987. He would later go on to attend the United States Army Command and General Staff College and earn a Master's of Strategic Studies from the United States Army War College. Lapte entered the Virginia Army National Guard in 1988 and recently completed his Brigade Command Tour of the 91st Troop Command. Lapte also served in numerous leadership and staff positions in the 1st Battalion, 116th Infantry, the 116th Infantry Brigade Combat Team, and the 29th Division. Furthermore, he served as a senior advisor to the Commanding General, Afghan National Army Ground Forces Command, and has successfully completed three overseas deployments. And Lapte, as you would expect, has received numerous awards, medals, and commendations, including the General MacArthur Leadership Award for Outstanding Leadership and the Bronze Star for Exceptional Combat Deployment in Afghanistan. In his civilian realm, Lapte is a senior applications engineer with Harris Knight and Vision Communication Systems in Roanoke. And this is an amazing thing to me. He holds six patent awards related to ground and aviation night vision goggles. Lapte is a certified robust design expert by Taguchi Institute, a Lean Six Sigma black belt by Harris Corporations, and a Lean Six Sigma green belt by the University of Michigan's College of Engineering. Lapte has been a volunteer with the American Red Cross as a language bank volunteer focusing on Cantonese and Vietnamese for 30 years. And my personal favorite, one of the original founders of the Virginia Veterans Parade here in Roanoke, Virginia. Ladies and gentlemen, I can honestly tell you that Lapte Flora is the epitome of the American dream and gives new meaning to being rewarded for hard work. So without further delay, Lapte, would you and your family please come forward. Gentlemen, please stand for the reading of the promotion. Attention to orders. Special orders number GO145-01, dated 24 May 2016. The President of the United States has reposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and honor of Colonel Lotte Moore. In view of these qualities, demonstrated leadership potential. He is there, therefore promoted to Brigadier General with the date of rank of 23 May 2016. By order of the Secretaries of the Army and the Air Force, he signed General Frank J. Grass, Chief, National Guard Bureau. Flora's wife, Twee, and daughter Christine will now place the one-star insignia 
Brigadier General on his uniform and beret. Major General Williams will now administer the oath to Brigadier General Flora. Seated. This time, Brigadier General Flora will now present his wife and daughter with flowers and appreciation of their love and support. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce Brigadier General Latte Flora, the Assistant Adjutant General of Strategic Initiatives. You know, this is unreal, right? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Major General Williams. Sir, thank you so much for the kind and generous introduction. And also thank you very much for hosting today's promotion ceremony. I am immensely grateful for this appointment. And I will do my utmost best to fulfill this responsibility with both honor and humility. Now before I begin my remark, I would like to uh, thank several individuals here, actually quite a few, that really put this whole event together. First, I would like to uh, thank Major Lindsay. He's not only the MC today, but he actually the project lead for the whole thing, try to synchronize everything, all the resources. Folks need to uh, get to where we need to be and all that good stuff. Thank you so much. And then to uh, Mr. Martin Lindsay, <coughs> who's the uh, director of this facility here, really appreciate the foundation allow us to have this uh, event in this wonderful place. And then I would like to uh, thank uh, Frank Dillon. I know he worked very hard to try to uh, secure this place for us. The 29 Omi Band, Manson Major Motley, Major and Mrs. Blevins. I'm telling you, Major Blevins sang the national anthem on my change command when I was a battalion commander. And when we deployed to Kosovo together, his wife sang the national anthem on our departure ceremony. Now come full circle. 
doing a great job. Welcome to Thailand's family. Uh, Major Sheldon, uh, Chief Robinson, Captain Terry, Command Sergeant Major Kaiser, Miss Harlow Sullivan, uh, my colleagues uh, from uh, Harris, John Mosico. If you, if you take a look at that program, that's a first class. She designed it, put it up together, and put it out 300 plus. So great job there, George. Really appreciate that. Uh, last but not least, I want to thank Lieutenant Colonel Noyes and his 276 engineer team. They had a uh, couple dozens, came out here the night before, set everything up, spent the night, and showed up at 07 this morning to make sure everything worked properly. So thank you guys, really appreciate it. Uh, Deputy Secretary uh, Victoria Cochran uh, of uh, Public Safety and Homeland Security, welcome ma'am. Major General Retire Long, Brigadier General Retire Scott, Brigadier General Mercer, Brigadier General Griffin, Brigadier General Heisman, Brigadier General Epperly, Command Sergeant Major Johnson, Mr. Lau, Colonels, Sergeants Majors, distinguished guests, family, friends, fellow citizen soldiers, and ladies and gentlemen of the press. Um, I am blessed beyond belief um, to see so many of my dear friends and families here today. I wish I had all the time this morning to really go and thank each and, one of, each and every one of you individually. There are so many wonderful stories and so many of you that have tremendous amount of impact in my life. For example, I have my first English teacher here, Mary. Now for those of you who try to teach a foreigner how to say sheet, <laughs> I'm not going to go there. It took me 20 years to try to perfect that pronunciation. So she had a tough job. So if I messed up today, it's not your fault. <laughs> There's so many here that have such a positive contribution to my career. Like my great friend here, Warren Veresic, his lovely wife, Kelly gave me my first job with Harris, and I'm still here for like, up to 27 years. Um, boss here just swore me in, but his brother, 28 years ago, a good-looking captain by the name of David P. Williams, swore me in to the guard when I was a second lieutenant. And now, his brother, 28 years later, swore me in as a general. This is a family. But I want each and every one of you to know though, all of you have either directly and or indirectly have paved the way for me to be here this morning. I am profoundly grateful for your presence. Um, this should serve as a testament that I did not reach this milestone on my own reason all of you here, because all of you have contributed. That's why I'm here. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking your precious time off and travel great distances to share this momentous occasion with both me and my family. I know many of you have uh, got up old dark 30 this morning. Our fellow Vietnamese American family came all the way from Northern of Virginia, Old Dr. 30 came all the way down here, and I know many of my families and friends travel all the way from the West Coast. But I think the winner for today, though, went to my great dear friend, General Mikkel Heskelen, and his lovely wife, Pia, came all the way from Helsinki, Finland. Mm -hmm. during the, uh, our first deployment in Bosnia. And those were very difficult times, as you know, for our uh, country during the uh, September 11. Actually, he and I, in the office, and watched the entire event unfold. And for pretty much the next six months, he was my uh, battle buddy. 
to make sure I'm okay and try, as I try to comfort my wife and my one-year-old daughter thousands of miles away from home. Now, how can you comfort your, uh, your wife when at that time, I'm sure you all remember, uh, after the attack and then the anthrax afterward, my wife said, honey, what do you want me to do? Here I was thousands of miles away. I said, honey, just get down in the basement, watch the news, turn off all the air conditioning, and tip all the window. And what can I tell you? You're talking about a helpless situation that your family have to endure. But my battle buddy here watched me to make sure I was good to go and, and uh, travel great distance to be here. Thank you very much, people. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, the promotion ceremony today, this morning, uh, indeed is a bittersweet event for me. I wish my parents, my sister Camelin, and my brother Minte were here to share with us. Especially my father, Major John Lewis Flora Jr. of the 116th Infantry Regiment of the 29th Infantry Division that landed on Omaha Beach, Normandy, France, 72 years ago today. I know he and my mom, Audrey, watching from heaven with amusement and pride that the little pool, little pool uh, refugee that they had adopted is now an American general. I am keenly aware of the historical significance of today's ceremony. And I am deeply grateful for the honor and recognition. But today's event should serve as an affirmation of faith in the American dream. The possibility in this great country is endless. The American dream is real. If only dare to dream it with laser focus, hard work, and perseverance. It seems like just yesterday that I had arrived in this country as a traumatized, penniless, Vietnamese no refugee who spoke not a single word of English. What I had been and still have to this day is a burning desire and a tremendous amount of gratitude to give back to my adopted country, the United States of America for her priceless gift of freedom and the second chance in life. There are no words in any language that can adequately describe the euphoric moment that I felt when I first landed in this country. And thus, ladies and gentlemen, without a doubt, this is heaven on earth. So to all my fellow Americans, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for your generosity, your empathy, and courage for welcoming us, old people, into your community as your neighbors, friends, colleagues, comrades, and fellow citizens. And to our veterans, especially the Vietnam veterans in the United States, and the Vietnam veterans of the Republic of Vietnam. To all of you, we owe a great debt, one infinitely larger than can ever be repaid. My fellow veterans, you are guardians of peace, a bulwark of liberty, and a beacon of light for those in dark places. Your devotion to duty and dedication to serve your fellow men has inspired me and thousands of Vietnamese Americans to follow your footsteps since our arrival in this country. The universal cry for freedom we are seeing around the world today is in no small part due to the example you set on those distant battlefields. So on behalf of my family, thank you for your gift of liberty and the opportunity to pursue our happiness. Your patriotism, 
sacrifices, and selfless service to defend our Constitution and to preserve the freedom and our way of life is honorable and appreciated. We will never forget you. There is a proverb in Vietnamese that say, ăn trái nhớ kẻ trồng cây. Which loosely translate to, as you enjoy the fruit, always, always remember the people who planted it. Major General Williams, sir, with your permission, I would like to express my sincerest appreciation and admiration and respect in Vietnamese to veterans of the Republic of Vietnam and their families for the sacrifices and bravery during the war and the atrocity committed during the occupation against them. Kính thưa toàn thể quý vị đồng minh, tôi chân thành cảm kích và lấy làm vinh hạnh có sự hiện diện của quý vị trong một ngày hôm nay. Đặc biệt đối với những cựu quân nhân quân lực Việt Nam Cộng hòa, tôi xin thành thật có bài lời để tri ân họ qua sự hy sinh cao cả và chiến đấu dũng cảm, bất khuất và kiên cường để bảo vệ toàn vẹn lãnh thổ cũng như duy trì an ninh cho toàn dân trong suốt hơn 20 năm và đồng thời tôi xin nêu lên niềm cảm phục của tôi qua sự kiên trì chịu đựng trong bao năm lưu đài khổ sai khốn khổ và ly tan của các cử chiến sĩ cũng như gia đình họ sau cuộc chiến tranh một lần nữa tôi xin cảm ơn quý vị hiện diện hôm nay và kính chúc quý vị một ngày tràn đầy vui tươi và thoải mái To my dear friends, brother rats, comrades, and colleagues, thank you for your friendship, guidance, support, and encouragement. I could not have gotten this far without all of you. As people would say, it took a village to raise a child. But in my case, it took a nation to raise this general. I am very grateful to all of you my fellow citizen soldiers, I am so humbled and honored to have served with you, many of you, for over 28 years. I am equally thankful for those valuable lessons and personal counsel. All of you have contributed significantly and are truly responsible for me being here this morning. For that, I am eternally grateful. The greatest honor for me when wearing this proud uniform is not the star on my shoulder or the ribbons on my chest, but having the privilege to serve with you all, the most dedicated, talented, patriotic Americans of our generation. <clears throat> I am asking for your continued support, guidance, and wise counsel as I prepare to take on the next chapter of my military career. Military promotion is not to award your past performance, but is an investment for your future in there. I am also equally appreciative of the National Guard. It provides me the unique honors to protect my countries in time of war, and also provide me the opportunity to serve my communities in time of peace and still allow me ample times to fulfill my civilian aspirations. Furthermore, I truly believe and must attribute much of my civilian success today to this professional organization where teamwork and character are non-negotiable. The National Guard is truly the best kept secret institution in our country. So to my outstanding employer of 27 years, start out as ITT Night Vision, and we transformed to Excellus Night Vision 
and now Harris Knife Asian. I am so grateful for them, for their support of my military career for the past 27 years that I with them, especially the three overseas de uh, deployments. I know it was tough, but they did it uh, for me. Very grateful for that. So uh, I'm asking, uh, as I take on this new responsibility, and hopefully they will provide me the same level of uh, general, generous support and, and, uh, and encouragement. And to all my families, uh, I thank you for your love, guidance, and encouragement. I would not have made it this far without your steadfast support, especially once again during my deployment. And to my new wife, Tui, my partner, my soulmate, there are no amount of flowers or words that can adequately express my love and appreciation for what you have done and continue to do for both me and Christine. Like so many military spouses, you are the unsung hero who altruistically work behind the scene to make her husband look good. <laughs> Just imagine, all of us know who landed on the moon, right? How many of you out there know the people who actually built the spacecraft that took Armstrong up the moon? Your better half, right? The spouses, those are unsung heroes. <coughs> you selflessly give up a promising mechanical engineering career in ITT night vision to be a stay-at-home mom, to watch over the home front. And you have survived three deployments and experienced stress that no spouse should have to endure. As I mentioned earlier, during September 11, I was in Bosnia. My poor wife with a young daughter stayed home all by herself. My second deployment, a telephone call, honey pie crack, overflow toilet all over the kitchen. <laughs> and third uh, deployment, the honey the tree fell on our driveway. Aww. For whatever reason, maybe they try to tell me something, I need to just stay home. <laughs> <laughs> Those endless days of being away from home, training, deployment, countless of our professional military education meetings, conferences, I took me away from you and Christine, but the comforting uh, about this uh, is to know that I have more unconditional support. Uh, as you told me when uh, during my last deployment to, uh, to Afghanistan, uh, the military separation and combat stress are just a very small price to pay for the liberty we, we enjoy every day. So I love you and thank you for your patience and encouragement. Lastly, before I close, uh, I would like to end with a quote by John F. Kennedy that say, As we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. So this quote, I believe, encapsulates the, tr the truest meaning of gratitude. I have to every individual who has made a profound impact on my life and continue to support me both in my endeavor and accomplishment. Again, thank you so much for coming and God bless. your attention to stage left. The Army authorizes individual flags to those who warrant them by virtue of their office. The United States Army has incorporated the use of flags to signify the presence of a general officer. The, this flag is being unfurled by Colonel Flores' sister, Christine Coulter, and Command Sergeant Major Henry Motley. It signifies the presence of a general officer and will be present at all official military functions attended by General Flora and will be visibly displayed in his office.
remain standing for the closing benediction from Chaplain Bennett and the departure of the official party. Let us pray. Holy and awesome God, it is with great joy we give you the thanks and the praise that is due to you. Today we celebrate with Brigadier General Lapte Flora. May he be blessed in all his future leadership. I pray that you will endow him with wisdom and strength to make the intellectual decisions that will lead to victory and peace for all. Let him always be mindful that to whom much is given, much is required. We ask you to direct him as he carries out the new responsibilities that will be his. Now, dear God, may we receive your blessings in order to be a blessing to others. We ask that you bless this World War II memorial and these here today for this special promotion service for Latte Florida. We ask your blessings for all our military, wheresoever dispersed. We ask that you bless General Latte Flora, and we ask that you bless these United States of America. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Lord, in your holy name we pray. Amen. ceremony at Brigadier General Flora. General Flora invites you to enjoy refreshments at the two adjacent shelters and following a few questions from the press, Brigadier General Flora and his family will be available here at the Arch to greet guests. Also, everyone is invited to attend the D-Day ceremony at 1100 hours behind the Sarge. Thank you for your time. <laughs> 